Welcome to this video in which we're going to see how we can connect our Thrive Teams website to Stripe using Thrive Automator. As a result, after this tutorial, I want us to be able to create an automation that will grant users access to one of our Thrive Apprentice products once they purchase a product via the setup that we've created in Stripe. As you might know, Stripe is a payment processor and you can create your products using their platform and sell them so that users will get access to your courses, for example, that you have created in Thrive Apprentice. The setup can be easily done using the incoming webhook start trigger of Thrive Automator. And as I said, as an example, we'll create a setup that will give users access to a paid course from Thrive Apprentice once they have purchased the course from our website and we will use Stripe as our payment processor of choice. So briefly, the steps to be taken here is to first of all, create a Thrive Apprentice product that contains the course that we're trying to sell. So the premium course, then we have to create the product in Stripe and customize it there. And next we'll create an automation in Thrive Automator that receives the user data once someone purchases the course. And with that user data, our automation will create a new user or update it if we already had that user on our website and give them access to our Thrive Apprentice product. Now let's go ahead and start the flow. First of all, I'm going to access Thrive Apprentice and show you the product that we're going to use. So prior to starting this video, I have already added and created a product, which is going to be this one. So we're going to sell this course that is inside this product. So as you can see, we already have it created and please check out our knowledge base or YouTube channels if you need information on how to create Thrive Apprentice products and how to add courses or other type of content inside products. Now we're going to have to access our Stripe account and create a product there. And that is going to be the product that we're going to link to our Thrive Apprentice course and create the automation that will grant the users access to the correct course. What's important here is that if we go to the access requirements tab, we're going to see a product identifier right here. And this is going to be useful for us when we create the automation. So just keep in mind that we're going to come back here. What I'm going to do now is access my Stripe dashboard and create a product that I'm going to later link into one of my pages so that when the users access that link, they can purchase the product and they will be granted access to this Tribe Apprentice product through our automation that we're going to create in a minute. Now, this is the Stripe dashboard. I'm going to go to the products section. And of course, this will be a list of all of the products that you have previously created, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to create a new one right now. So once the details have been set for my product, I'm going to click on save product. And now we have it right here. Now, what's important to know here is that the setup that I will show you now will grant users access to the Tribe Apprentice product only if they purchase this specific course. What I'm going to do next is an optional step, but this is how you can make sure that the automation will grant users access to your Tribe Apprentice product if they purchase this specific Stripe product. Now, for that to happen, I'm going to have to create a payment link for this product, which can easily be done by clicking on this option. And then of course you can set up everything that's needed here. You also have some advanced options if you need them. I'm going to simply go for the standard settings and click on create link. So now we have our Stripe product purchase link right here. Now before moving on, I'm going to scroll down and get to the metadata section. And here is where we're going to need our Tribe Apprentice product ID because we're going to have to manually add the product ID as a field that will get sent to Tribe Automator. So for that, I'm going to click here and we're going to need to create a key value pair. The key that you add here can be anything, but I will go for the apprentice product ID just like that. And then in this value field, we're going to have to add the Tribe Apprentice product ID. For that, I'm going to go back to Tribe Apprentice. And I'm going to open my product again and go to the access requirements tab. And as I said, we're going to use this product identifier. 
Now, in case you want to add a custom product ID, you can do it right here in this field, but we're going to just go for this one and add it as the metadata of our Stripe product. So right here. All right, we can save this. And then we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be to access Stripe Automator and start the automation so that we can come back here and connect everything. From the WordPress admin dashboard, I'm going to access Stripe Automator. And of course, we're going to add the new automation by clicking on Add New right here, and you can name it if you want. All right, the start trigger here will be the incoming webhook one, so I'm going to select it. And what I need to do now is copy this webhook URL and create an endpoint in Stripe. So once I've copied this URL, I'm going to go back to Stripe. We're going to need to access the developers section from here and go to the webhooks tab where we will have to add a new endpoint. For that, I'm going to click here on add endpoint and in the endpoint URL section, I'm going to paste in the webhook URL copied from Drive Automator. You can optionally add a description and the important part is to select the events this endpoint should listen to. I'm going to click on select events and in my case, I'm going to go for the checkout category and select the checkout session completed event. Of course, you can add multiple events if you want here. You can customize everything as you wish. I'm only going to go for this event and I'm going to click on add events. Once you're done here, you can click on add endpoint, which is going to create this webhook and start waiting for events to happen. Now to continue setting up the incoming webhook trigger, we will actually need to populate these fields. So the incoming data fields with the necessary information of the user who has purchased the course, such as the name, the email, and of course the product ID to give the users that have purchased the specific Stripe product access to the correct course after simulating a payment in Stripe. So we can access the purchase link of our Stripe product, fill in the necessary details as we would when purchasing a course, come back here and click on listen, finalize the payment, and then we will see that these fields will be populated. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to access my products again and go to the product that I've just created and click on view payment link. And by the way, this is the URL that you can actually link to your pages so that you can create a button, for example, or a link. And when someone clicks on it, they will be taken to this page. So as you can see, this is the purchase page of my photography course. I'm going to enter some test details here and then go back and start listening and come back here and finalize the payment. All right, so I filled in all of these details, but before clicking on pay, I'm going to go back to my Tribe Automator automation and click on listen. All right, so we're back here. I'm going to click on listen and then click on pay. So once the payment has been processed, if we go back to our automation, we're going to see that these fields have been populated as expected. Now Stripe will send plenty of parameters here and you can get rid of the ones that you don't need by clicking on this small X icon right here. We're going to do that in a second, but first of all, we're going to have to make sure that the fields are being correctly mapped. There are two important factors to keep in mind. The first one is that the user email field should be mapped as an email type of field instead of a text type of field. So what I'm going to do is look for the email field and we can find it right here and make sure that this is being dynamically mapped as an email type of field. So this would be the first thing to pay attention to. And then we're going to also have to look for our metadata field that we've created a few minutes ago. And we can find it right here. And if you remember, we've named it apprentice product ID. So this is the metadata field that we've added when creating the payment link. And for this one, we're going to have to make sure that this is being dynamically mapped as the apprentice product ID. So now you can go through the rest of the fields if you want and remove them like so, but I'm going to keep them as they are and simply click on done because we're finished with the start trigger. So now the next actions will be pretty straightforward. The first one we're going to have to add is from the WordPress category, and this is going to be the find or create user action. This way, in case the person who has just purchased the product was already a user on my website, the system will look for them and will grant them access to the product. 
and if they have not yet created an account on my site prior to purchasing the course, the automation will automatically create a user for them and they will also receive the email with the login information. Now, when setting up this action, you can map the first and last name fields as you wish. The easiest way would be to use this dynamic data option and map the first name to the user first name here and do the same for the user last name. And then you can choose which role should be granted to the users that get access to your course. And the last action that we should choose here would be from the apprentice category, of course, and this should be the grant access to product action. And here from this field, make sure you select the dynamic apprentice product ID option. You can click on done and make sure that you set the automation to active and then click on save and finish. As I said, as the last step, you can add the Stripe product checkout URL to one of your pages, meaning that you can simply copy this URL, access your sales page, for example, and you can add a button or a text and link this page to that element. For example, let's add the button here and of course, customize it as you wish. And in the target URL section, you will be able to add the product purchase link and then save everything. And now we can do a test and see if everything works properly. I'm going to preview this page and I'm also going to use a temporary email address to test everything out. And now I'm going to go to the customers section of Tribe Apprentice and look for this email just to make sure that this has not been used anywhere. So as you can see, we have no customers that are using this email. Now let's go back to this page and click on this button to go to our payment page to use that email and fill in the rest of these fields to create a test payment. All right, so I'm going to click on pay. And once we get the confirmation, we should be set and we should now have access to the Tribe Apprentice course. Now let's go back to Tribe Apprentice and see if the user has been added as a customer. We're back here. I'm going to refresh the page. And as you can see, we do have the customer that is using this email that we've just inserted and that has access to the Tribe Apprentice product that we've set up. So this is how you can create this setup and how you can connect Stripe to your website using Tribe Automator without having to create any other integration. Now, in case you want to automate the process that removes the users from the Tribe Apprentice products in case their subscription has ended or after a certain amount of time has passed, you can do that by creating another automation, which is going to have a similar structure to this one that we've just created. But when setting up this incoming webhook trigger, you will have to create another webhook in Stripe in which you will have to select events that will lead to users having their access to the course revoked, such as these ones, for example. And of course, you will have to change this step from grant users access to the product and use this one instead, the remove access from product action. Now, all this, of course, will depend on the way you want to create the setup and the processes on your site. And remember that what I've just showed you in this tutorial was just an example, but you can create the setup in various ways. I really hope this tutorial was useful to you and make sure to check out the other tutorials as well. Oh.